It's the 12th of April 2018 and it's been a little while now since I've done a video on account of the fact that I was trying last time to sync a screencast where I record the screen on my computer with um, a video recorded on my digital camera which doesn't have a microphone at all. Um, and I haven't yet managed to do that on Caden Live on Linux. I've got a quite an old Linux setup that I'm trying to do that on and syncing isn't ideal with it. I don't have, maybe ideal would be to have a Mac and do something with that, but I've got a very old Mac uh, 2008 or something like that, which isn't gonna do it very well there. So um, I'm going back today to just try and do a general video right now about where I'm at with Marginalia. Um, it's kind of difficult to look over it right now. I've had a week a week off. Um, I've been working solidly doing some landscape gardening for um, a friend, I guess. I, I know him through my girlfriend. Um, and it's at a school I used to work at. And I'm just digging holes and moving things around and um, kind of enjoying doing getting out into the... Um, it's spring right now and, and, and Prague's beautiful. The first day I just drove around essentially as a driver's mate with this guy just chatting, going to some kind of the tip uh, to, to, to get rid of some rubbish, which reminded me of going there with my dad when I was a kid and things like that. Then just driving around seeing a lot of Prague on the, on the first most beautiful kind of spring day this year. Um, and that was kind of cool. Subsequent to that, then I was helping to mix concrete and wheelbarrows, moving gravel around and yeah, digging holes and moving shrubs and things like that. Um, which means that it interrupted my writing routine. Um, it's very manual work and after it, I haven't been in the mood to do any any writing or I haven't been able to do any writing. But at the same time, it gives a kind of break and um, I did this kind of thing as well at the start of this period of trying to work more or less full time on my writing. And it helped me, I think, to develop some of the ideas for Call Them Soldiers, which is the uh, novel that I am attempting to serialise with the first, well, from the first issue of Marginalia. Um, in terms of Marginalia itself and its development, I currently, on the technical level, I've broken it into several Git repositories, um, with one of the issues... Um, Issue zero, that which I'm working on now, is its own Git repository right now. And that, again, on a technical level, will become a sub-module of, I guess, Marginalia, I think is what I decided. I, I, I've set up the get, get ideas for uh, the Git workflow uh, of how to do that. But what it means is that, that I actually am at the point where I'm going to have to design the back end for Marginalia, which I don't think will be, well it won't be a straightforward HTML website, which means that I picked up the other day a um, a book on Flask web development by a guy called Miguel Grinberg, who has a very good tutorial on Flask. If you're not technically minded, then Flask is a a web framework. It helps you put to put interactive web apps together with a programming language called Python, um, which this is a really intimidating kind of work that I got as one of my first books on programming since I was a kid when I had a lovely ring bound kind of uh, guide to BBC Basic, which I used a lot as a kid and then gave up computing entirely until about four years ago where as an autistic person, I really got into it <laughs> very much, which doesn't mean that I'm, I'm, I'm good at it in the sense that I haven't had enough time to develop my skills in that area. Um, but I work by throwing myself into something. Um, right now I'm at the point where this in itself would be a pretty intimidating full-time project. Um, to do it at the same time as developing essentially um, a prototype for a communitarian creative commons zine that would be something else entirely in itself that's a huge um, project um, but I have no other option but to, to put the whole first issue together myself and then see whether I can get other contributors to to, to come in and, and work on the zine um, now 
that's one side of it, and I've been looking at the technical side of things, which is something that I can do when either I'm ill, which I have been for a couple of days, or I am distracted or between things or really processing something in a big way, um, then I tend to do a lot of the kind of um, tech work. And otherwise it feels like a waste of time to use my intellectual, intellectual energies on something which is not writing. Um, which is why really I could be a lot further with Python and with web development and everything else if it was something that I did consistently and consistently found time for. I move forward with it and uh, advance my understanding quite rapidly when I have the time to do it. I think temperamentally I'm very well suited to doing that kind of work and had I learned that at the right age then probably I would have had an easier uh, and uh, a much more comfortable and perhaps uh, a much less interesting time of things growing up. Um, but I didn't, and I got into literature instead, which, as somebody with ADHD, uh, was, you know, not guaranteed to earn me an income, which is why I've been marginal all of my life. Um, working in the garden this last week, I've been listening to um, a biography of James Joyce by, I think he's called James Richard Elmore, I think. Uh, I might be wrong about that. Richard Elman, maybe. Um, and it's very good, but talking about being marginal, I it gave me a lot to reflect on in the sense that Joyce was not capable of doing any of these kind of realistic things. Now, that would look very arrogant that I'm comparing myself to somebody like Joyce, and especially when I've borrowed a lot of his titles and things like that to, to, to play on. Um, I'm not an expert on Joyce. I've, I've, I've barely read his work. I've read Dubliners a couple of times and little bits of a portrait of the artist or whatever else. So I don't know a great deal about it. I've dipped in and out of Ulysses. Um, but in terms of the man's temperament, the man's incapacity to think of things which um, deal with the realities of everyday life, I think I'm, I'm, I'm sadly very very similar to that, and I'm very incapable of, of doing a lot of these things. And I was thinking of that and listening to his difficulties in getting publishing, difficulties of finding paid work to support himself, and um, all of the rest of it. Um, when also I had in the back of my mind that at the moment there's, um, I'm being pursued by the student uh, loan people. Now, I'm very bad at dealing with bureaucracy in any of its forms and kind of lose emails and whatever else a lot of the time. Um, so that kind of, I guess it scares me in one sense because I've always, I'm somebody who's taken from my father, I've taken a really strong work ethic, which, you know, he grew up in, in Donegal in the west of Ireland and really kind of um, got on and, and, and um, survived and even perhaps thrived in Great Britain, um, just repairing televisions and doing, you know, um, working in factories and whatever else he did, he, he, he worked for himself. And um, I just want to note, I guess, that I never was able to make use of my university degree. I, was, I had a lot of um, health problems, attention deficit disorder, undiagnosed, Asperger's syndrome, undiagnosed, depression diagnosed and treated for a while and all the rest of it. Um, but despite having worked very hard all of that time and changed career, I don't know how many times, and changed the place I was living, I don't know how many times, um, I never really worked and found a stable job that paid the bills and did all of that. And um, I think that's reasonably consistent with the experience of, of many of my generation, as, as, as we know, but um, it doesn't make one feel comfortable. Um, and I guess now I'm moving to another phase of being marginal in the sense that I'm trying to ask people to pay for work, which I will offer for free. And at the same time, it's work which is... Um, it's working in things, fields which interest me. I, 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 I can do this because it interests me. I can't do other things that don't interest me. And it would not be a nonsense to um, describe attention deficit disorder um, as 
the inability to do things or to think about things which don't interest you. They, something can be in front of my face and I won't see it. I won't, it'll be there, but I won't be taking it in. I can be listening to something, or, or rather, the sounds can be there, but it doesn't mean that I'll be listening to it in the sense of actually um, reflecting upon it and reacting to it. Uh, and that carries on right down the scale to, to, to forms, which are on the bottom. It's just way below my kind of um, boredom threshold, and I just can't, I can't go down there. The same as, you know, if you, you can imagine kids in a swimming pool trying to dive for the weights on the bottom and some can't make it somehow. Um, and that's how I am with, with doing things like forms and stuff like that. Um, and the opposite is the case for things which interest me, which kind of I think I consider meaningful, I consider worthwhile. And that is the case whether or not there's a pragmatic reason to be focusing on other things. And so right now I'm interested in um, it's been, for example, over the last few months, kind of, um, the history of, well, here you've got an, an indigenous people's history of the United States by Roxanne Dunbar Ortiz. I will pronounce that terribly, I'm absolutely certain. Um, it's winner of the 2015 American Book Award, and it is fantastic. Um, I've moved on from that to a degree now because I've had to park up um, Call Them Soldiers and the narrative frame, which is the first part of Call Them Soldiers, called History is on the Make. And um, I hope to go back and revise the first section for the first issue of Marginalia. Um, but I moved on to work on other things here, and I'm looking back at a manuscript which I started writing on the 19th of March, it seems here, of... Uh, Wutterfer, as I say in, in Czech, Wutterfer then must we do, what the fuck then must we do? Um, which takes as its subject, um, and it's two things which perhaps bear no relation to one another. It takes as its subject to Bohomil Harabal, as I have mentioned before. Here we have a book, a wonderful book by Tomáš Mazal, who knew Harabal, and um, he has... This is wonderful, I, I love it. Um, but Bohmel Harabal. And another thing which is perhaps thrown together in the essay purely because the two were, were there in my mind as obsessions at the time, which is something that I'm describing um, in the introductory, in, in the introduction to the essay right now. Um, so Bohmel Harabal and also technology. And with that comes community, with that comes the idea of work, which is why it's relevant in one sense that I've been working kind of in a garden, doing doing a job that once was respected and once could earn actual money so that you could live on it and so on. Um, but in this time too, I'm meeting a lot of people who are trying to do those kind of works, working with their hands and really struggling to scrape by. Um, there's one guy I know who works with second-hand bikes and, and, and renovates them and makes them into these beautiful kind of artistic objects and he's struggled to make any money at all by doing that and he's very very good with his hands does all of these kind of work all this kind of work and um, he's as marginal as I am myself so um, what does it mean that we've moved beyond these kinds of meaningful work which are the kind of pleasant work, which is pleasant for a certain kind of temperament. Um, it's a style of temperament, a style of thinking, which is often associated with men, or with, that is, the more masculine types of personality, which often overlaps with men, as, as um, like myself, I guess. And it's, it's very difficult for that type of temperament to just have a job in, in an office and things like that, and not turn bad, um, I think. So what does it mean for our society that these types of jobs don't exist anymore? And what does it mean for our society that we're, we're, we don't have true community anymore? Um, and instead we have this a sad style of community, um, such as Facebook. And the, the word community, I wonder, by the way, whether it was used in the same way when something that could be described as community used to to exist to the degree 
that it would be surprising to anybody were it to disappear. Um, it would be unthinkable for it to not exist in many in many places. Um, now, that all comes over and comes across with um, the investigation into Facebook and Cambridge Analytica and data mining and everything else is going on now. <laughs> 10 years too late, essentially, and that's quite interesting that suddenly we're talking about this when we should have been talking about it so long ago. Um, it was in 2007, 2008 maybe, where I started working on Call and Soldiers, um, which was, at the time, a futuristic dystopia projecting into a future where these kinds of social networks are... Um, interwoven with society and interwoven with government and the manipulation of people and um, what I call the eudaemon in Call Them Soldiers is clearly based upon Facebook and also I talk about how um, the eudaemon knows the negative space. Whatever is absent in its data model takes a certain form, it takes a certain shape which then sooner or later clicks with an identity, an individual, uh, or a community that is not in that system. And then they're in trouble, essentially. And I kind of made a joke on today on, on, on Twitter, Marginalia underscore EU, um, which I set up maybe a week or two ago. Um, whether that is ironic or not, given given what I'm trying to set up here, is, is another question. But I'm also trying to work on an alternative to these kind of proprietorial social networks by trying to install at ppp.marginalia.eu something like an alternative to an alternative form of, of social media, um, whether that be Mastodon or whether it be... Um, I can't remember what it's called. Pleroma, was it called? Um, another one that's been started up recently. I was initially looking at uh, Diaspora and whether or not that becomes a community social network or not, I, I doubt that I have the skills for that, but I will certainly try. Um, I can write about my experience of trying to do that and, and what it means to engage with these kind of alternative online communities, whether they are indeed communities and so on. Um, but what I was talking about with, with Call Them Soldiers is, is that it feels all of a sudden that this kind of futuristic dystopia is becoming uh, a, a, a historical novel or an alternative history. Um, and I don't know how I feel about that. I would like to work on these novels. On the other hand, it would, it would take up, it's, it's essentially a long series of, of, of novels. I've thought it all through. Um, it's always interesting to me, like, in the sense that I interest myself. Um, and I'm interested in my own process, whether it's about actually producing an artefact at the end of it, or, or whether actually I will always be somebody who it's about the process. It's possibly about the process. Right now, this process has become investigating my own past, uh, my experiences with autism, with depression, with being marginal, with all of the places that I have lived, and that's quite... In one sense this time, I don't feel that it is particularly triggering in the sense that it really brings back all the darkness of those days and things like that. I'm almost at the point where now, having cured myself of the underlying condition to a certain degree, not completely, but having discovered and retaken really on the underlying condition of all of the executive dysfunction, I call it, the, um, the problem of executive function that I, that I have, which can be described as attention deficit disorder, Asperger's syndrome and depression and all the rest of it. And that is a difficulty with the immune system and with the um, sympathetic nervous system, with the um, with gut flora and, and things like that, which I've really been tackling the last couple of years with, with Woodstock, who I've been living with here. Um, and what that means is my head is much more, it's much calmer. Um, I've also been using cannabinoids, cannabinoids including uh, CBD and simply marijuana, um, and that's helped a great deal to settle me as well in many ways, and been a great deal more effective and useful to me than than whether it be um, Ritalin or anything else that I've taken. 
what's it called, the um, Stratera, and things like that which I've tried for attention deficit disorder in the past. And now having settled my mind and not settled my condition, my the fact that I remain marginal, that I don't have all of the certificates that I'm supposed to have, I'm not on paper skilled enough to do, I don't know what, work in publishing or journalism or, or whatever it would be, kind of uh, web development. Um, and now that I've got to a point where it would almost be absurd for me, having struggled so much to um, to have got on top of these problems and these conditions and these um, the, the emotional turmoil of it all by writing, to, to not write now would be absolutely absurd. Um, and yet, there's a lot to process, <laughs> there's a lot to describe, and um, there's no guarantee that any of that will be marketable. So in a few months' time, it might be that I manage to produce something which is worthwhile, which is worth something, and in 20 years it might even be, be recognised for that. But it's th that's no guarantee that um, I will not have seen something which is it, it, most people are incapable of actually understanding to be important and well expressed at this moment. And it doesn't mean that I'm not trying to do it in a way that, that I consider to be ethically engaged in in the way that we need to move forward where we are with our with our kind of the failures of empathy of our of our civilization right now the um the the, the aggression and competition of our of our society right now the um ecocide of our society right now that the, the patriarchy the kind of um homophobia the bigotry the racism and, and everything else that we're dealing with right now um the genocide essentially of of, of uh, of, of Muslims in, in the Middle East and um, the just everything we're seeing right now, all of, all of the, the, the the awful focus of, of the, the, the politics of the of, of the last 30 years in, in the West um, it doesn't mean that by by acknowledging and examining all of that I won't, I won't remain marginal in a very new way that's now functional but still marginal because I'm talking about these problems and, and everybody is caught up in Facebook, which I think they will remain caught up in Facebook um, long after we have, we have all, the enlightened among us, have, have, have moved on from Facebook or whatever else. I think there's so many barriers to anybody actually uh, moving forward with, with open technologies and open kind of uh, open source development and all the rest of it. I think there are so many tools that we can use to start to fund open source development, to start to kind of um, to use crowdfund funding, peer to peer funding, and things like that. And and if we move forward with peer to peer development in software, then soon enough we would have the tools to have peer to peer decentralized communication networks and uh, and funding bodies and things like that. But the powers arraigned against us are very very strong and very powerful. Um, in any case, so where I'm at, I'm taking on this still, uh, what the fuck then must we do, which is a play on Tolstoy, um, a title of Tolstoy, it's, it's variously translated, but it's a play on that, and it's also a play on kind of the, the language of social networks, um, but it's saying, well, okay, what do we have to do now, and it's essentially my, my personal history, and also... It's pretty much a manifesto for what marginalia is, and um, I don't think I've yet unlocked the Git repository where you can read it, but in order to get this anywhere, first of all, this is a manuscript I gave up on writing it into the computer pretty soon because it would have taken me, I had moved on from it. It's one of the versions, the, the, the strength of the tool that I used called Git for version management um, online is that I develop my writing and you can look at the versions and, and and the progression and the evolution of the writing because it's it's almost never a single draft and you can look back and see how the writing has involved evolved really kind of also suggest that I that I take some some uh, features of an old version and put it together depending on the license you might work together your own version of it or or, or write your own version 
of that essay on that theme and so on. Um, one good example of that, for example, is um, a template I have made for a theme, which is LETS, Local Exchange Trading System, uh, a form of kind of local currency that many, many towns have, versus Bitcoin. So what is a community's experience or an individual's experience with using LETS versus using Bitcoin? And, um, and if a number of people wrote about that, it would really give us an idea of what we need to move forward. Because I think actually in many ways, LETS is uh, simply a better currency um, system for communities to develop than, than, than is Bitcoin. It doesn't work though for that peer-to-peer -peer kind of um, paying an, an artist or creator on the other side of the world. So possibly we could use the overlap of those, both of those things. Um, but in terms of getting this, I was saying, onto Marginalia.eu, I'm kind of going to need to do this, which means that I'm in a little bit of a phase now of trying to work out whether I should try to get this finished or work on the drafts I have already in the Git repository for issue zero or whether I should really focus on doing this, which I have a lot of work to do yet. Um, and all of that is pretty difficult and I'm not earning money and it's still difficult to imagine that even if I get all of this there, even if I get all of this done, will I still remain in a position where I'm talking about such niche ideas and they might suddenly come, bam, and it's useful to talk about these or, 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 or you know, valuable and um, that it goes mainstream in a few years' time. But what if I'm too early? What if it's something that we have to um, talk about, but pioneers will never kind of break through with it in, in any kind of meaningful way? Um, in any case, whether that or does, does or doesn't happen, maybe I can continue to, to, to dig holes here and there and kind of, you know, work on a uh, vineyard here and there as I will be sometime soon and pick up work here and there from various people. But if I do that, then I'm taking the risk that I will never be paying off those student loans. I'll never be doing all of these things. I'll be contributing to communities. I'll be doing something positive, but I will be marginalizing myself on their terms again and again and again by trying to choose something moral over something that, that is not. And that goes back, I think, to, to, to try and round this up for today. Um, I remember, I don't recall his name, but the Facebook whistleblower, he actually wasn't, he was working for, for, for the people that were creating the problem, um, so I don't know if, if, if whistleblower was the correct term for him. He was working for Cambridge Analytica, People have called him the, the Facebook whistleblower, nevertheless. And um, he, he once asked himself, well, I got into working for Cambridge Analytica, working in, in kind of um, developing these, I don't know, algorithms or whatever he was doing. Um, but what if I had worked for Merrill Lynch instead? What if I had gone to these other huge companies that he mentioned instead? Well, actually, you'd have still been fucking up community, wouldn't you? You know, you, if you fucked up community in one way, you could have fucked up community in another. And at the same time, you've got all these marginal people who are digging holes in gardens and whatever, and we're just forgetting them. Uh, and that's what our economic system has done in the last, in the time that I've been an adult. It's just buried the people who are doing the good work in their communities when the guy who's a baker just barely makes any money and barely can afford to have their own flat or their own living space or whatever else. Whereas the, the asshole who's starts off his career by um, stealing people's photographs and deciding, you know, putting up a website which, which ranks women uh, by their attractiveness um, from their stolen photographs and then moves on to, to collect data and, um, and, and do surveillance for the American government. They, they make billions uh, and, and, and it looks like they're going to be the next president for a time. Um, I think that's all pretty fucked up, frankly, I'm going to be honest about that. And um, I think it's the economic system that is, that is making people like me marginal, and I don't think that's right. Um, so I'm going to be writing about that, and I don't know whether it will ever earn me a penny, but it's what i got to do. Um, and that's where I am with it at the moment. If you go to marginalia.eu right now, you will find um, a single index page 
um, and a functioning wiki, but I'm trying to rebuild it right now. So um, bear with me and um, I'll come back to update you in future. Thank you.